So Gauss's law is, he says in the book, always true, but it's not always useful. What does he mean by that? Well, sometimes you run into situations where you can't apply the symmetry of the problem to make Gauss's law reduced to something trivial like this. Um, and there's really only three cases that he lists. And if you could think of any more, I'd be more than happy to hear it. Only three cases where you have enough symmetry that you can reduce Gauss's law to something uh, simple. So one is spherical symmetry, as we've already seen. Two is cylindrical symmetry. And three is um, plane symmetry. It hasn't either. So what do these look like? Well, you've seen the spherical one, so we draw a sphere, you know, and then we enclose that with a sphere that is centered on that sphere. That's the Gaussian surface we use. Um, for the cylindrical symmetry, we have a, an infinite long tube or a line, and then we enclose that with a cylinder. And as long as we, it's, it's long enough, we're not going to have any of the flux flowing out the sides. So that means that the flux is going to be pretty easy to calculate. Um, and for planar symmetry, when we have a plane, uh, what we do is we draw a Gaussian pillbox. So let me draw what that would look like. So here's, here's the box, and it goes through the plane and out the other end. Okay, so we have the plane basically intersecting this thing, and the plane is basically everywhere. Okay, now um, you don't ever encounter infinitely long lines or um, infinitely long surfaces in real life, but as long as you stay away from the edges, Gauss's law will pretty much hold true. So that's the three kinds of symmetry that we would use to apply Gauss's law.